Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to this ex. No, <laughs> sorry. Try again. Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nano Liz at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and today we're gonna have 2v2 matches because there is a tournament on Saturday. The 2v2 Zero K matches are gonna have the first one being Lodri and Andrew Y2K versus Sprung and Hokomoko on Ravaged. So, this map, Ravaged, is one of my favorite maps for those of you not familiar. But are familiar with StarCraft 2, which will look very familiar. For those of you who aren't familiar with either 0K or StarCraft 2, this map is one of those unusual maps where there's actual choke points. It's choke point ramps. Choke points between ramps. There's choke points down to lower sections. There's choke points in the center of the map. This map is a very choke point oriented map. Although in 0K that actually matters less than you'd think. Partly because of terraforming and partly because this is a very wide choke point. <laughs> I mean, units can get through it very easily. After about like a dozen or so. After a dozen or so then it's a problem. But because we have, as you can see, Andrew and Lowry both accounting for the map, because we have all-terrain units, choke points don't mean as much as they would in StarCraft, for example. So, with that said, let's get to the game proper. So, Andrew and Lowry setting up, like I said, Spider and Jump Bot Factory, in both cases able to bypass. Andrew going for the scouting, Lowry going for the heavy muscle. Sprung as the only one who built a factory so far, Hokumoko building a proxy Amphib because... Hokomoko just does that. Hokomoko loves the Amphib Factory. A lot. If, if they can get away with it, they will play Amphib. They will always play Amphib. And, I mean, it's worth testing. I'm, I can't blame them for that. That's a great idea. You know, test out the factory. Really see where it can go. What can it do? Does it work in 2v2? Actually, it does work fairly well in 2v2. Does it work in a map like Ravaged, which actually has water, but doesn't allow you to really access it directly? I've seen a few games of people putting ships down, but you don't do that. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's not worth it, because there's not a whole lot of room for them to maneuver along the side. So, first contact has been made. Sprung will be losing a glaive, retreating with the other one wisely. Well done. But at this point, Andrew going straight for Heavy Muscle, while they're going for Hermit straight up. They're not going for Venoms at the start, which is not an entirely unusual option, but it is not what... Not totally what I'd expect. Like, Hermits are not unpopular, but they aren't necessarily the go-to unit. They aren't quite like... Venoms used to be basically the go-to unit. Hermits have become a lot more popular in recent times. And they're not bad, although admittedly against a Glaive, a Hermit would basically have stopped this harassment in its tracks. Because right now, that Hermit got lucky just there. But really, that Glaive is causing too much problems. If Sprung hadn't... <sighs> Did Sprung pay attention to that at the end? But yeah, Sprung didn't have to do much to dodge that. That Hermit was having a very hard time taking care of the Glaive. But, on the other hand, Pyro coming in here, threatening Hokomoko's commander right off the bat. This is actually a very valid threat. You know, there used to be health bars in this game. Oh, well, I guess it's no longer a thing. Not sure what's going on there, but... At any rate, Hokomoko's commander is taking a lot of damage. I really didn't turn that off. What the heck's going on? Hmm. This is extremely strange. Well, I will have to look into that, because this is being played on the new engine, and normally... Units usually have health bars. That's typically a thing. Yeah, there they are. Okay, that was weird. Not sure why the widget decided to simply crap out like that. I shall have to check the info log when I'm done, because that was a very bizarre thing to have happen. Anyhow, weird display UI bugs aside, Andrew Lori very rapidly taking the map. I'd say more rapidly than Sprung and Hokomoko. Lori particularly taking that center position, that is going to be... If, if Lori can hold that, that will probably decide the game. At this point, Sprung and Hokomoko look like they're trying to get over to the side here. Sprung clearly trying to build up this more hidden expansion. But... I don't, I don't know, that might be kind of tricky to do. Oh, F9 does health bars? Okay, maybe I just accidentally hit F9. Apparently, F9 enables and disables health bars. I will have to deal with that in a second. Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay, that must have been my mistake. I must have accidentally hit F9 at some point. I guess when I was trying to modify the UI. Okay, that was my bad. Don't worry. No bugs. So, back to the game. Sprung? Putting nice pressure on here. I like that the this lower expansion is a very lucrative one, so Sprung is a good... Sprung is right to put pressure on there. And Hokomoko having basically taken this for Sprung. Sprung and Hokomoko have that expansion. This expansion over here in the eastern side of the map is taken, but it hasn't actually been built up yet, which is a little surprising. So at this point, Andrew and Lori are potentially behind. 
But Sprung and Hokomoko haven't yet taken advantage of that. They aren't building an economy fast enough. Like this, this conch is idle for one thing. The commander's in the main base. This conch being idle is a really bad thing that could be out here. And oh, these ducks are moving out of position right as the commander goes in. That is something that I don't think Hokomoko knew was happening. And no, they didn't. That was, that was just bad luck or bad timing. They, they had no idea that the commander was coming down there. They do have a duck here, but that w one duck won't be enough. However, they still harass nicely, so what am I to, who am I to complain? That harassment worked out well, so Lodi lost that center section, so we still have a game going on. Sprung and Hokomoko actually have now taken the economic lead, having taken these metal extractors over here and the ones in the lower section, which Andrew has just now taken for the blue team, but at the same time, Lodi just lost the center, which means at this point, Sprung and Hokomoko are ahead economically. Now, whether or not they can translate that into anything useful from here is yet to be seen. At this point, they are continuing to go with... Oh, boys are being built. Okay, so that's... Well, let's think about this. Hermits? Okay, that does help. Against Redbacks, it helps quite a lot. No Venom, surprisingly. Against Pyros, I can also see that being useful. So, but then at the same time, Pyros can dodge it more easily. And Sprung... Oh, I didn't even notice this. Nicely done, Sprung. Sprung has their gremlin right inside the base. They know exactly what's going on. They know that there's a crab being built, for one thing. Which is playing exactly into an into Red Team's hands. I mean, with Hokomoko having the boys coming up, that is going to be very useful. So let's slow down the crab and then just hit it from a distance. As they do. Although, at this point, I don't know, Archer, I think can... I think Archer can push crab. Like, Archer is a bit of a risky thing because it is weak. But at the same time, it does have an impulse gun, so it completely, if I'm, if memory serves, or at least if the engine's, if the new engine's impulse works properly, then it will actually work nicely, because what'll end up happening is the archer will push the crab out of position, stopping the crab's armor from being in effect. I'm not entirely sure that that works right now. The engine's, the engine's impulse behavior has changed a fair amount in the last couple months or so. At this point, I'm not entirely sure how it works. It's changed that much. But if it works properly, I'm fairly certain the archer is supposed to be able to move the crab out of position. And Andrew, a lot of pressure here. I don't see... Okay, is this going to go around the side? These glaives going up the side? They are trying to go up the side. They are... Oh, they're just about able to. Yes, that that is going to work. So at this point, this lotus will be... Yeah, that'll be a problem. These... Oh, no, sprung. No, they thought they were close enough. They were not. And yet, let both glaives die. That wasn't quite free. These defenders would have stopped them. But still, that is painful. That is painful nonetheless. Like, Sprung doesn't know that. Oh, Hokomoko pointing out an infiltrator. Yes, an infiltrator has actually been deployed. It is coming up to Sprung's commander, and it is about to hit. There we go. But no follow up. Sprung doesn't really have anything to deal with. Oh, sorry, Andrew doesn't have anything to deal with this. Sprung doesn't have to worry about this because Hokomoko is picking up the slack. And there are, of course, the two lotuses, but. Yeah, mainly Hokomoko does have the units coming in here. That redback's going to be a pain in the butt, though. The boys are out of position, and that redback has a field day with the ducks. At the same time, we have the southeast. Nothing's happening. Just moves. Just movement. Hokomoko looks like they're going for a counterattack. Yeah, oh, very strong counterattack. Now that they pushed out pretty much all of Red Team out of their territory, although they did lose this expansion. Really, that was just that commander coming in there and the ducks moving in. I mean, they took out the center, which was good. They stole the advantage, so I said that the center attack was still effective. It was still the right choice. It hasn't at least bit them yet. So it looks like this is going to be a bit of a problem. Oh yeah, Lori pointing out that apparently they lost... Oh, there was a failed comm snipe attempt. Yes, that's right. Yeah, the early comm snipe attempt over here, where they tried to get rid of Hokomogus commander, lost two pyros. That was... That was actually fairly big, so Lodi pointing out that very early attack put him kind of on the back foot. And I kind of agree, but I think that when they had the center, it wasn't that bad. And the problem was more so they didn't expect those ducks coming in there, which I don't... Do they even have radar now? No, they have vision now, but they never had radar over there. So they never knew the ducks were coming, the ducks never knew that Lodi's commander was coming. So that wasn't necessarily the best. I mean, that was kind of well, bad luck, really. Neither player scouted enough for it to really be either player's fault. Nice comp snipe, though. Andrew losing their commander, and at this point, I'd say they're definitely at the back foot. If, if green team or blue team wasn't before, they are now. But they still have this expansion. They still have a decent assault force. Okamoko is the one that's really in a scary position. 
This is what I mean. Like, you go for Amphib. If you think Amphib's gonna work, go for Amphib. It's not a bad factory at all. And this is where Archers, however, would have been kind of handy. Because the armor is so thick. <laughs> and the Hermits. Because the Hermits. Man, I actually really want to try those Hermits out. Really make them work. They have not built a single Venom so far. Which is not entirely unusual, but it's... Still not necessarily how I would expect Spider to be built. It is, however, something that I think Spider probably does well at. But then again, we're talking about Spider versus Cloaky Amphib. And against Cloaky, it works nicely. Against Amphib, I'd say it's kind of questionable. Like, Amphib can get some pretty beefy units out there that makes the Venom somewhat useless. And we are seeing a drop. What kind of drop are we seeing? I don't see any warriors. I see the sniper. I don't. I see ducks, but they're relatively quick. And they're not that tough, so they wouldn't really be useful for a deep strike invasion. I... Hmm. I don't really see what you'd use here. Oh, there are warriors. There we go. The warriors just weren't built in sync. Okay. Sprung is 26 mil. They could have built those at the same time. Regardless... Failed attacks coming in here. Feeding Andrew and Lori a bit of metal. Getting them possibly something of a way back in. It's going to be tough, though. They basically have to... I say, okay, let's look at this army here. So there's a large army coming in along the north. There's the other army just of glaives set up along the south. There's a warrior drop coming in here, which I don't know if it's being accounted for. It doesn't look like it. So you continue to see the hermit redback set up. And... Oof. Nice firewalker usage, though. Getting rid of about three boys for free and the other two being forced back. Not bad shot. That is definitely going to make it harder for Andrew and Lori to be ousted out of this game. I don't think they're going to win in the game, though. Especially since they just... Okay, this area is now cut off, and it looks like Sprung and Hokomoko know it. Are they going to go for it? Sprung's going for it. Hokomoko looks like they're a bit hesitant right now. Okay, there we go. Proper communication has come into effect, and Hokomoko coming in to help this area out. This will not work. There'll be about... I think half a dozen ducks that die, and then the rest of us will be just death for Lori and their commander and their expansion. And no, Hokomoko moving back. They did lose about half a dozen ducks, but they're deciding to retreat instead of advancing. Which, there's no counterattack coming in yet. But I can kind of see that, ooh, Firewalker working against the puppies. Not the best option. But still, that was... Uh, opened it up. I think if a larger army were to come in there, that would be handy. And now the drop is likely to happen any second now. All of the all of the warriors have been loaded up, or rather, all of the Valkyries have loaded up with a warrior. And this is... Where is this going to go? Is this going to go to the commander? I th think it is. It's going down to the south. It's going to have to pass by Loader's commander, so they might just decide to go for it. And hiding behind the cliffs, because that's what you do on this map. You hide behind the cliffs. And no, they are bypassing Lord's Commander by just sticking to this little valley area. Which means a main base strike, as is usual, as a sumo and crab are being built. And despite all the forces that came in, all the puppies that came in here, two of the warriors survived. Okay, good. So two have survived. Three, actually. Wow, okay, that's even better than it looked. So three warriors up. And this main base is basically broken. No counterattack seems forthcoming. In fact, Hokomoko going around in a flank. Lori trying to desperately get back, but this is too late. Okay, that's down, and is the spider factor going to go down? I don't think it'll matter. I think that Andrew and Lori are going to surrender before that even happens. But, well, they haven't surrendered yet. No counterattack, no deep strike force of their own. I mean, there's a bit of a counterattack with these firewalkers, but that's not enough. This is, this is game. Although, unfortunately, they did lose their commander. Okay, it's not totally game, because there is the reclaim that was all inside of the blue team's base. And another bit of reclaim is the Valkyrie just waits to die. It lost the will to live. Rather sad. Yeah, with the flanking attack here, they realize this is game. That is game! Nice warrior drop at the end, but really, I think combination of the fact that they lost those pyros early on. That was like 500 metal lost early on. And they also lost the center expansion really quick. I mean, it was kind of the center expansion or the commander. And in terms of metal value, uh, it's a bit tough to say because they did get those expansions later on with the commander. I'm a bit surprised that Spring and Hokomoko didn't go for this expansion when they had it defended. 
at any rate, that worked out for Sprung and Hokomoko, so well done to them. And this is going to be first of two games. This is going to be a bit of a shorter cast today, and I just realized I forgot the Little Maple Leaf for Canada Day. Because it's Canada Day today. That's why the, tr the stream is early. I tried to put a little Maple Leaf there, or at least I did before, but whatever. Anyway. Yeah, so it's Canada Day. It's also like two year anniversary of me doing 0k commentary. Yay. I hope I'm less incompetent than I was then that first day. I probably am. So, self congratulations aside, we do have another match. Tartarus, played by Anarchid and Banana Eye versus Crazy135 and Lori, which is going to be up in just a moment, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> 